Welcome everyone to our next performance clinic, preventing supply chain attacks, automating security gates into your delivery pipeline. This is part of my cloud automation observability clinic season. And uh, I'm, my name is Andy Grabner. I've been doing this for a while, but today I have a repeating guest, Christoph Renders. Hi, Christoph, how are you doing? Hey Andy, I'm doing well. Good, thank you. Uh, how about yourself? Very good. A uh, very exciting topic, especially because it is um, very top on our mind and fresh on our minds, security has always been a topic, but I think these days we'll learn more from you about log for shell and everything that happened. But it's really interesting to learn a little bit more about how we can prevent these vulnerabilities from actually you know, impacting our production. So without further ado, Christoph, take it away. Show us what we have to offer from a Dynatrix perspective. Awesome. Thank you very much, Andy. Yeah, as you said, Right, it's uh, it has been an interesting time uh, last uh, last few weeks. I think a lot of people lost some Christmas uh, sleep over this uh, uh, and and saw how how their whole world uh, collapsed pretty much in a day. I wouldn't say collapsed, maybe, but uh, but they were they were made aware of of, of a vulnerability that that impacted them and uh, to to a very great extent. So what I want to focus on today is well, okay how can we help customers uh, avoiding this from happening or at least manage this in a much uh, much uh, better way so you know just to kind of set up you know the the scene here right so software uh, as we use it it's comprised generally out of uh, you know existing libraries either they can be commercial or open source uh, upon which we build our custom code now, why do organizations use existing libraries well because it's a lot faster right you don't want to reinvent the wheel uh, every single time. So you use something that somebody else has already built, tried and tested. Uh, however, right, with uh, using existing libraries, we also see that new vulnerabilities in these libraries are found every day. Uh, I think log for shell great example, right? New vulnerability, what has been detected, had been there forever, right? But was detected and, and was found, and it, suddenly the entire world was aware of it. So we need to make sure that that security just like performance, you know, we, we've been talking about performance for the last so however long, I can't even remember how long we've been doing this, but uh, uh, I've been doing it for at least uh, a decade. Uh, and, and, and performance is, is, is important when we release new software, but so is security, right? No, there's no use of, of having the fastest app if there are vulnerabilities uh, inside. So in order for organizations to, to better handle this and to detect this sooner, Right? They need to have a shift left mentality on security. Just like they do for performance, security is also important mm -hmm. here. And they need to do that so that they can detect these vulnerabilities early on because then it's easier and quicker to resolve them. So today I'm going to show you how, how Dynatrace's AppSec module and cloud automation allows you to create a security gate for any new builds. So you can detect these automatically and handle and act upon them automatically as well. So how that will look like? Well, kind of like this, right? Hey, this is this is a, a cloud automation uh, evaluation screen, right? You can see here, build over, build what has happened. But he, for the for the people with the keen eye, in the bottom they see four metrics that they might not have seen before. They are security based metrics. How many critical, high, low, and medium vulnerabilities do I have? And hey, if I have some. I probably want to stop my build from being promoted. And that's what we're going to be showing today. And, and I think, Christoph, I want to interject here, I think, because what this screen also shows is that the definition of done, the criteria of quality, evaluating a release is no longer just constrained to, let's say, error rate, functionality, or performance, response time. But you now include, as you said, are there any high vulnerabilities? Because if we have any high vulnerabilities or critical vulnerabilities, then this needs to impact the score, the quality, and therefore we need to make a very good decision on whether we want to move this forward, yes or no. And it's great to see that with the concept of, that we have with cloud automation, we can pull in all these different pieces of data from Dynatrace, performance, functionality, and now also security, functional and non-functional requirements and automate the decision. Really cool, and I'm looking forward to the demo. But I think you have a little bit more background first for us. Yeah, exactly, because... I want to quickly show like how um, how how Dynatrace AppSec kind of uh, showed up during during the Lock for Shell days. So everybody knows that uh, on December 10th, kind of Lock for Shell, uh, the vulnerability was was released or was actually shown to the wide world wide world, and and, and it yeah 
it, uh, it created some challenges. And, and if we take a look at the timeline of this whole thing, we, uh, we saw that you know, early, early on the day in December 10th, uh, the vulnerability was listed uh, on, on, on GitHub. Right, so, uh, and not that long later, a few hours later, uh, the National Vulnerability Database also listed this uh, this vulnerability. So people took a look at it, you know, s uh, tried to see what the impact was, and, and created a, a high or a critical level of vulnerability. Now, SNCC, which is a, a commercial uh, uh, library that analyzes these, have, have actually dedicated secur security specialists. They uh, they took a look at the vulnerability and they uh, they also listed it on their on their website not only half an hour later. Now here it becomes very very cool. Uh, so Dynatrace, which has the live feed of the SNCC database, ingested this new vulnerability or actually uh, included it in its in its live scanning. Mm -hmm. You know, about five minutes later. Yeah, and then about 15 minutes after that, right, because our libraries were updated and, and now all these environments where we have AppSec running would automatically, without any query or any manual work that had to be done, show our customers, right, which applications were impacted, which of them were exposed to the worldwide uh, web uh, and which ones were accessing sensitive data. Mm -hmm. Now, this only took about 20 minutes, right? So if you take a look at it from the time that, it, that this was listed, until the time that we actually showed it to our customers without any manual effort, right? It was only 20 minutes. Now, that's crazy, yeah. right? That was super fast. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail during this session about what our AppSec module is and how it works, because as I understand, there is going to be a, an esteemed colleague of mine who will be telling you all about this. So I don't want to steal his thunder, or maybe it has already happened. Um, and so uh, I'm just going to focus on, well, how do we manage this better, right? Now, when we detected this, there were two things that we noticed. Now, the first thing is that our customers, well, of course, everybody started going a little bit crazy, right? Because now all of a sudden, right, they would have this vulnerability show up. Now, the cool thing about what we did, right, is that, okay, we showed our customers which apps were impacted, right, immediately, automatically. It might have a, a very large list of applications that were impacted, which could mean that, well, how, you need to know how to, how to handle this. How do I tackle this intelligently, mm -hmm. right? So the good thing is that with, with, with AppSec, with our, with our AppSec module, we actually can tell our customers, hey, these are your priority apps. These are the ones that are exposed to the internet. For lock for shell especially, this was important because the biggest impact was for those apps that were actually exposed to the outside world, right? If you have apps that were somewhere lying in your in your uh, uh, in uh, behind all your corporate firewalls that nobody could actually get to, right? They were less important to fix. Had to be fixed, of course, right? You don't want to have known vulnerabilities lying around. But knowing where to start and how to intelligently tackle this, this is a very very important piece. Now, what we also allow our customers to do is and then say, hey, I'm going to take all of those. Critical, uh, critical apps, right? And I'm going to link that to who owns those apps from a security perspective, and then just automatically assign those uh, those vulnerabilities to the right team, so they can actually gain control, and you have kind of a focus mitigation of the problem instead of you know running around like a headless chicken, as they say, mm -hmm. right? So uh, this is actually a very cool, a very cool part of what we do, right? This observability mixed with security, yeah. Now, this is, this is, of course, the first bit. Everybody had to resolve this. Everybody had to manage, mitigate this problem. But the focus, of course, of, of, of today's session is, well, how do I prevent this? How do I make it so that, you know, whenever I release a new version of my app, I don't introduce a new vulnerability? Mm -hmm. And for that as well, right, we, 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 have, we have a solution, right? With security gates, right, we can actually help our customers detect which new build or a new version that they want to release, right, contains vulnerabilities and then build a quality gate around it. So they have automated protection. We will prevent this new version from being released. Why would I release something that has a known vulnerability? And if you tie that back into how, um, uh, how the lock for shell vulnerability kind of how that, how that changed over time or how that evolved over time is that with each new patched version, there, was a, there were actually new uh, vulnerabilities that were being detected in those new versions. So instead of you know, fixing it once, you had to continuously check. You had to 
before you release, make sure that the version that you were using of that library did not have any newly documented vulnerabilities mm -hmm. because otherwise you're just patching one vulnerability and having another one mm -hmm. being, uh, being released. So this is, was very, very important. Awesome. So on that, right, what we're going to do now is we're going to, uh, we're going to kind of take a look at the mechanism behind this. Right, because it, of course, it's, it's all great to talk, to this, show some nice screenshots uh, and, and all that, but, but how, does that actually, how does that actually look like in reality? Now, when we actually are having uh, a new version being deployed of our app, right, we are going to execute some automated tests maybe as an organization, and we're going to trigger a quality gate. And this quality gate can be comprised of many different things. Right? It can be around functional, uh, validation. I think a lot of organizations have gotten quite mature in, uh, over the years in, in making sure that the app does what it needs to do, right? Uh, if I click on a button, my text needs to go red, right? Uh, we, we, have, we have plenty of ways of, of checking that. Mm -hmm. Where we come in is, well, how do I make sure that this functionality does not come at a performance cost or a security cost, right? So we can build a quality gate, which uh, is comprised of many different sources, right? Uh, and we can make a decision at the end of this quality gate whether or not to promote our artifact or to fail our artifact and actually send it back to the developer uh, and say, hey, you now need to fix this security problem before we can actually release this. Mm -hmm. right. and, and, and the key here is, is that you have early, often feedback that you can help to make your decision. Now, when we're taking a look at this, right, we have this concept of continuous observability where we will actually, um, and I think we have had already had some performance clinics about this in the past, but where we actually make sure that our observability is in line with our new artifact. Right? So configuring uh, our observability uh, as part of the, of, the, of the pipeline, right? But now at the end, we come to continuous validation where we not just only once, but continuously check all of our requirements around performance and also security. Mm -hmm. And now the key thing is here, right? And you've noticed it already, the sources, bit, right? We can use a lot of data to make this quality gate, to make this release validation, right? We can use our one agent transactional data, right? Making sure that our, our transactions are, are performing the way that they should, right? But we can also use our application security data, making sure that I will not release anything that has a known uh, security issue inside. And Christoph, first of all, thank you for that overview. And I wanna highlight one thing because I talk with a lot of customers around how to integrate observability um, into the pipeline around performance checks. And some people say, well, I don't really have performance tests, good tests yet. Some, as you say, have some are mature, mm -hmm. but the nice thing, this works also with your, let's say, functional tests. If you're deploying a new build and you execute your Selenium tests or whatever you have, to execute your main business transactions, mm -hmm. the Dynatrix One agent will immediately through the upsec capability detect whether a vulnerable library is loaded. So for this to work, you don't necessarily need large scale performance tests. All it takes is deploy the app into an environment that is enabled with the One agent for continuous observability. And then AppSec will automatically report whether there is a vulnerability. And so this data point can then be used in the quality gate as part of like a the security check of the quality gate. So that's really nice. Thank you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, I think you bring up a, a very good point as well. During my conversation with customers, exactly similar feedback. Uh, we don't have performance tests. They all have functional tests because that is something that they are required to do from, from the business, right? It needs to work, right? And, and this indeed is, is plenty enough for, for an AppSec uh, uh, security gate, yeah. Definitely, definitely. So I think now is, is you know, like enough, enough uh, slideware showing, right? We have to get to a point yeah, where we demos. actually, yeah, we, 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 you know, we show what people actually are looking for. And, and let, me, uh, let me drag in my browser window here. Um, Want to make sure that, uh, that you can see it as well? Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I see awesome. the release screen. Perfect. Hey, the release screen. Now, what you can see here in this release screen, let's, let's just start here for a quick second and, and to, set the, to set the scene uh, here. I have here this app, you know, the Simple Node Service. Uh, you might be familiar to you because I think I stole it from you. Uh, and, um, and, and I have it deployed over the last hour, uh, three different versions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
you see that I started with version one, I have a version two, and I also deployed a version five, right, uh, into, into my environment. And it's all about this app that we're going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. Now this app, right, it gets deployed uh, using a, a set of pipelines. There's nothing really, uh, nothing really crazy here because, uh, you know, this is just a daisy chain of a, a, bunch, of, a bunch of steps. So building a new artifact, um, deploying it in a staging environment, running some tests against it, yeah, mm -hmm. some, some functional and some, some performance tests. And then I'm also evaluating this, um, this artifact. Yeah, so you can see here that um, I am actually, uh, after I run my performance tests, I run an evaluation. Mm -hmm. yeah, and this evaluation will actually, uh, will actually make sure that um, my, uh, my build is, is of a good enough score. So you can see here, uh, I, have a, I have a score overlay, you can see at 87%, uh, uh, like 69% and so forth. Now, what is the AppSec piece of this? Yeah. So first I have this, this app dish, which is stored in a repository, right? And, uh, and we can actually see a few things. This is a Node.js app. So this I'm, I'm gonna show it from a Node.js perspective, but the same applies to other technologies. So we can see here in, this, in, in our package.json where we can list our dependencies. I've listed two specific dependencies that I know contain vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, the semantic version, semver uh, dependency of this, of this particular version is to be known to have a, a, low, uh, a low level security vulnerability. Uh, and then this one here, this is our main, our big culprit. This one has a high uh, vulnerability inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, it is important to note, and again, here we will take a look probably deeper into the dedicated AppSec uh, performance uh, uh, clinic or observability uh, clinic, I should call it now. Yeah. Uh, and, and where we will see that this is not enough for AppSec to be triggered. And this is important because it's not because something is referenced as a dependency that it's actually being used, mm -hmm. right? So as opposed to just static code analysis where, you know, you just see that this is there and you will, uh, you will alert upon it. We will go a little bit further. So this is my app. Uh, so if I go into the, uh, into the actual app itself, right? Uh, I actually control my, uh, my library from being loaded based on the build number. Yeah, so uh, I can, whenever I deploy or I, I create a new build, I can specify the build number that I want to do. And it, and it kind of corresponds to the build number that I showed you in the releases screen earlier. So only when I have a build number five, right, I will actually introduce uh, this, uh, this AppSec vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can see here that uh, here I'm actually requiring the library, I'm loading it, yeah, and I'm actually going to be using it. Only here, so only for build number five, I will have a vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Makes a lot of sense. And I think this is also a, an interesting point that um, there's different ways to detect vulnerable libraries. You can either scan the file system. You can say, hey, if it's somewhere on the file system, you have a problem, mm -hmm. but it might be in a temp directory. Nobody needs it. And therefore you are chasing down the wrong rabbit hole and, and basically spending time that you shouldn't spend. Yeah. It could be that your manifest files are allowing your app to load a certain library, but unless the code actually loads the library, it is still not a problem. And this is why I like the way you're going here because you're showing the capabilities of AppSec on dynamic detection of vulnerabilities because it only detects things if there's a real problem because it's been loaded and not just because it potentially loads or whether it's lying around somewhere on the file system. Yeah. I, th I think it ties back to the previous points, right? It's uh, it is it would still be critical to resolve at some point, yeah. right? But if you take if you have hundreds of apps that are impacted by Log4j, mm -hmm. right, or any other uh, vulnerability, you wanna you wanna focus on the right ones first, mm -hmm. uh, and and show and focus on the ones that are really a problem, as yeah. opposed to just having too many of them and not knowing where to start. Yeah, yeah. So that's I think a key capability here. Um, now, so this is our app, right? Um, so what I have done is before this, before our, our, our little recording here, I, um, I took the time uh, to, uh, to launch a few of those to kind of show what is happening. Yeah, so to basically have a couple of good builds, bad builds. So we have a, a little bit of an idea. And, and the story here is very simple, right? So let's, uh, let's take a look at our little, uh, little app here. All right, my simple node project. And we can see here that, that uh, if, we, if we go here to the sequences, 
you can see that over the last uh, today, actually, I did a few of those. And, and the idea is very simple. Uh, I have my build number one, which is a that, you know, perfect place to be and everything is good. Performance is good. Uh, nothing bad is going on here. And then um, I have a build number two, right, which has uh, a performance regression. Right. This is something that organizations uh, get faced with uh, a lot, right? So they, they detect, hey, my performance isn't as good anymore. Uh, I need to fix it. Uh, and, and the developer says, oh, yeah, I noticed that there is this, this library I can use that will speed up my, uh, my application or actually has some, some good algorithms in there that I can use and end up fixing the performance issue, but unknowingly well, thanks to AppSec, knowingly, right, introduce a vulnerability. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so what we see here, right, in our in our build number five, you can see here is build number five that, uh, that, uh, uh, that was being uh, tested, right? You can actually see that while the performance was good, right, and, and, and I, I invited all the users to take a look at any of your awesome uh, awesome sessions on, on how cloud automation can actually help, help them to... Um, to resolve this or actually build quality gates, but we can see that you know my response time metrics, right? They are all good. They, you know, like it's all green, right? Meaning that it passes our our objectives. But for our uh, uh, security metrics that we have just introduced, we can see that there is actually a red block here. Mm -hmm. Now, if I scroll down, right, you can see here, and 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 you can see here that that my high security vulnerability has a value of one. Well, one means that it has detected a, uh, a vulnerability, mm -hmm. but it should not be, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we actually build a, 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 a gate around that. Now, for the keen eye here, it, it, it's maybe a, some feedback for our cloud automation team. It's not super visible right now, but this metric was actually here in bold. Uh, you can see that here. Now, this, this just means that this is what we call a key SLI a key indicator that always needs to pass. If it doesn't pass, no matter my score, right, mm -hmm. it will always fail. And that is, that is why this is in bold. So maybe in the future, they could add some, maybe some color coding to it or, or add a little icon. But this is, I think is, 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 in, is great because performance is important, but we could easily say that security is more important than just performance. And we, uh, we definitely don't want any of these vulnerabilities to be promoted. Now, how do I do this? How do I get this data here, right? So I can, and, and this, I, this is the next piece of, of, the, of the puzzle uh, because all of this, of course, is driven by a definition, right? What to look at. And, and this definition uh, is, uh, is something that if I go back into my repository, um, I, can, uh, I can also take a look at. Now, what I actually have here, right, is uh, I have an SLI file. And the SLI file looks, looks very daunting, right? It looks so much text in there. But all, all that it shows in here, right, are basically some calls to our, uh, our Dynatrace APIs. Yeah, that is exactly what we have here. And let's not focus too much on the first ones, but let's focus on the bottom ones. Yeah, you can see here that we have four SLI definitions, service level indicator definitions that focus on AppSec data uh, for each level of criticality. Yeah, I have high, critical, medium, and low. And I basically um, ask Dynatrace AppSec, give me the number of security problems that you have detected right, for my newly deployed build version. Right? And that number gets used right, to, to, against a service level objective uh, validation. All right, so here I just ask, hey, from this build version, give me the... Uh, give me the number of problems, security problems that were detected. And then it's just the same as with any objective that we can define, right? We can actually put some criteria against it. So you can see here that for my high and critical vulnerabilities, yeah, I put pass criteria, it can never be higher than zero because I, I will not allow it, yeah? For my medium, and uh, low ones, yeah. in this case, I'm a bit more lenient. I'd say, well, I just don't want it to increase by more than two. Is this a very good best practice uh, for the real world? Well, this is more for me to show how, how we can use this, but you can be a bit more lenient, for example, right? And I also, as I said earlier in, 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 my, in my demo, right? 
our high and critical vulnerabilities are listed as key SLIs, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning that they always need to pass, otherwise um, my overall build will fail. And that's that's it actually, right? So this is this is what I wanted to show you, uh, and and you know using the Dynatrace data that is get gets detected, I can stop new vulnerabilities in their tracks before they get uh, they get to impact my actual my actual users. Perfect. Hey, Christoph, just to recap, uh, if you do me a favor, go back to your Jenkins. That of means course. in your Jenkins tab, you are. You, this means you can integrate this pretty much with any tool, whether this is Jenkins, GitLab. Harness, yes. um, Azure DevOps, right? It doesn't really matter. You've shown it here from Jenkins. Jenkins, yep. in your case, is deploying the app, is also running the performance test. And then it may, it says here, it makes a call to Captain. For those mm -hmm. people that don't know, Captain is our kind of open source initiative that is implementing the core declarative orchestration engine that we, for our customers, also provide as part of the Dynatrace cloud automation solution. That means you can run Captain yourself if you want to, or you can just get uh, it part of Dynatrace cloud automation. Yeah. And if you do me one more favor, if you go back to the Dynatrace screen uh, where it says releases. Yeah, for sure. So this is the overview of which version is running. And as you mentioned, uh, there are a lot of other materials out there on AppSec. But the security detection, if you can just do me a quick favor and just show us the security screen yeah. um, in Dynatrace. Okay, I can actually show it from here because it, it's, okay. it's all very well integrated. And okay. this, is, this is, I think, uh, one of the cool features. Mm -hmm. if, I, uh, if I open up, oh, sorry, if I just click on, on this, you can actually see that uh, it was red before, right? Uh, there was a little red line in front of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see here that it is like that because, well, we have two security vulnerabilities that have been detected on here, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, you know, I don't know if you remember from the beginning of, our, of, my, of my demo, I, I showed you that I load two mm -hmm. bad libraries on purpose, of course, yeah. One being semantic versioning server, which has a known vulnerability. And then this is, of course, the one that impacts us the most, uh, which has a high level uh, uh, vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And this is just a phenomenon, again, to, to recap, um, the way we do it, dynamically analyzing whether vulnerable libraries are not only potentially loaded, but really loaded by mm -hmm. your app, and yeah. then give you a risk score. We give we call it the Davis security score that factors in the um, vulnerability itself, but also things like, is this application exposed to the public internet? Is this application accessing a database? Because depending on these factors, uh, the chances are higher for an, in an, an attacker to, to make more damage. Right? So there's a lot of things. Uh, more on that, as you said, uh, material out there from uh, our colleagues, Daniel uh, Carr, also from uh, Asad Ali. There's a couple of blog posts and uh, videos out there that you check out. Mm -hmm. yeah, Very nice. And I think with this, uh, Christoph, if you want to do me the favor, go back to your slides. I think there's one more piece of information in there as additional resources that we have for people. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the whole resource center on Log4Shell. Clearly Log4Shell is top on all of our minds, but what AppSec does, it not only works for Log4Shell, it works, works obviously for all the vulnerabilities. Uh, check out the blogs on DevSecOps. This was kind of the initial introduction to Christoph, what you've just shown in your live demo. And mm -hmm. there's more things. This works for certain, for different technologies and uh, yeah, check it out what we have. And Christoph, I want to thank you so much for doing this because, you know, seeing, first of all, like great job in the slides to explain why this is a problem and that we need to shift left and integrate this into our delivery pipelines to prevent any problems from being problematic in production. Yeah, no, awesome. It was, it was great to be here again, as always. Thanks for inviting me. Um, you know, this is this is a, a hot topic, obviously, right? Uh, uh, you know, it it uh, got a lot of attention uh, late last year. But what people need to understand is not because the world was on fire uh, uh, a few weeks ago and now everything seems better. That now you know everything is good and they don't need to focus on this anymore. Yeah. Security is is one of those topics that you need to keep on focusing on, uh, and you need to make sure that that whatever new version you deploy. Right, does not contain any anything that could be used against you, uh, you know, and especially 
as organizations go so quickly these days in releasing new features, uh, it is a lot quicker or a lot easier to introduce something uh, that uh, that you might not want to be or might not want to have introduced. So um, yeah, on that, thanks again for having me here. And, and yeah, if people have any questions, they, they can reach out to you or reach out to me. Uh, no right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.